Alrighty, hi. My name is Luann Lonergan and I will be your registered nurse today. Can you tell me your name? Joe Smith. Alright, and what's your birth date? 13055. I'm gonna just check your armband. Good. Alright. Mr. Smith, I'm just gonna listen to your heart today and look at your uh, vessels in your neck, okay? okay? Do you have any chest pain or any palpitations? No. Any kind of um, shortness of breath going on? No, I'm good. Okay, I'm wonderful. So I'm just lifting the bed up a little bit. So I'm going to just take off the covers and you let me know if you're getting cold, okay? And really what I'm going to do for this heart assessment, I'm going to be using my stethoscope. So I'm going to wipe that off a little bit so that it is cleaned. And I'm going to use both the bell and the diaphragm as I'm doing this. So really what I'm looking at, when I'm going to, I'm going to be assessing four anatomic sites um, or areas on, on your chest. And I'm going um, to listen to the valves that are in your heart. So as I'm looking here, I've got to find where I'm um, looking for. So I'm going to go down here. I've got a suprasternal notch. I'm going to come on down here until I find kind of a protrusion here. And that's um, in between the manubrium and the sternal body. And then if I go off here, there's a squishy part. So I'm going to remember where that was. Now another way to find this, I'm going to feel your clavicle. And that is like rib number one. Then if I go real close by the squishy part, that is intercostal space one. And then I'll find rib two and then I'm going to find intercostal space too. So that's beautiful. So that second intercostal space, that's key. So I have to know how to find that. So again, you can either count down from the clavicle. So it'd be bone, squishy area, bone, squishy area. Or you could find that nice protrusion on the sternum and then go off to the side a little bit lower and that would be squishy area. What I'm feeling right now, um, or this area, is the aortic er um, area. And I'm going to hear S2, or I'm listening for two sounds, lub-dub, lub-dub. And I'm going to hear that sound too, the dup. Um, it's going to be stronger in this position. So I'm going to just listen here, Mr. Smith. All right. You have a nice heart rate. Nice nice heart sound and I'm just listening for it now I don't hear any extra sounds I don't hear any murmurs that's real good I'm going to turn it to the bell and just lightly set that bell down beautiful same thing all right so that was the aortic area and now I'm going to go right across the sternum and again, that's going to be the pulmonic area. So that's in the second intercostal space, very close to the sternum by the sternal border. So I'm going to listen there, and that's the pulmonic area. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to listen. Beautiful. I don't hear any extra sounds. Okay, now I'm going to go down and I'm going to count ribs again. So I'm going to count, this was the second intercostal space. This is the third rib, third intercostal space. This is the fourth rib, and this is the fourth intercostal space. And that's right on the left side, the left border. And that's where I'm going to hear the tricuspid sound the best, the tri over the tricuspid valve. And some people would put that in the fifth intercostal space, but I'm going, most people would find it right here in the fourth intercostal. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to listen. And what's kind of neat about this, the S1 sound is loudest here. The lub. Out of the lub-dub, the lub is loudest. And then I'm going to just turn that to the bell. You have a very nice heart rate. Okay. Beautiful. I'm not hearing any murmurs, anything like that. So I was in the fourth 
intercostal space so now I'm going to go down one more. I feel a rib and now I feel a squishy part. But now I'm going to have to go all the way over. If I go to the clavicle it's midclavicular so I'm going to go and it's a spot right under the um, nipple line usually and that is where I'm going to hear the apical pulse. They call that the mitral area. That is the apical pulse and that one is um, very important. That's where I'm going to hear that sound the loudest. So I'm going to go right there and listen. Again the S1 is louder here. And then I'm going to flip it to the bell and listen there too. Beautiful, nice and strong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to count this for a full minute. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Sixty-one, beautiful. It was very regular, so it was very regular beat, and it was sixty-one. If I couldn't hear that, there's a couple things. I could have Mr. Smith turn on his left side, and that might put the heart a little bit closer to the chest wall, or I could even sit him up and have him lean forward. Why don't you do that, Mr. Smith? Just sit on up and then just lean forward a little bit. And that's where I could listen that way. So if I wasn't able to hear it, but his was very strong, very regular, I could hear it just fine. But those are some ways that I could augment the sound. So good, all right. So we just looked at the chest and picked out four anatomic areas of the heart. Now what I'd like to do is just look at your carotid arteries in your neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to palpate them first. So I'm gonna just turn over, um, turn your head to the side first. And I like to look at the angle of the jaw, and I like to go right in front of that sternocleidoid mastoid, and that's where I like to palpate a little bit. And I should feel that very nicely. Beautiful. Good, I'm gonna turn your head back here and just very, so I um, feel that very nicely. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna just, and I don't wanna do those at the same time, because he needs blood flow to his brain. So I'm gonna come, again, the angle of the jaw, and kind of just go right here. And I got a real nice pulse there. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is listen. And I'm going to listen over those areas because sometimes we hear something called a bruit. We don't want to hear that. That's turbulent blood flow. So I'm going to just see if I, you know, or listen and see if I can hear a bruit. And I like to use the bell. Okay. So I'm going to just go right on over that area real lightly. And can you hold your breath for a minute? Beautiful. I don't hear any blowing sounds, no turbulent um, blood moving, so that's good. Sometimes I can hear just a faint heartbeat, and that's okay. So I'm going to do it to the other side also. So you can breathe now, and then when I tell you don't breathe, then I will. So, okay, stop breathing for just a second. Beautiful. I hear a, a, a faint heartbeat there, and that's normal. But I don't hear a bruit, which is like a turbulent blood flow, like a whooshing sound or anything like that. So that looks real good. 
So I just have one other vessel in your neck that I want to uh, take a peek at, and I'm going to need to put your head flat for a moment. I'm going to look at your jugular vein and just see if I can um, see that jugular vein distension at all. So I'm going to put you all the way down. That's called supine. And I'm going to just take out your pillow for a minute, and you can just put your head back. Good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see, I'm going to just turn your head a little bit and see we've got a little bit of a jugular vein there. And that's normal to see some distension. Yep, so that's that right external jugular. And then I'm going to turn here and I see one here. That's that left internal jug, or excuse me, external jugular. Yep, so I'm going to put your head up a little bit to about 45 degrees and that should go away. Let's give you your pillow, or we'll leave that there for a minute just so people can see that. Is that comfortable? Mm, yes. Okay, good. Boy, and I'm going to look, and it's just a little bit there. Let's see, where are we? Yep. And I'm going to just turn here, and I don't really see anything there at all. So they're going flat. And then I'm going to put you all the way up to 90 degrees, and that should be, again, they should be pretty flat. How about if I give you a pillow? That might be hard to hold your head up. You can lean back now. And I'm just looking at those jugular veins. Beautiful. And those are flat. That's good. So that's what I'm, I'm looking at. So really, Mr. Smith, everything looks fine. Your heart um, is beating very nicely. It's very regular. Um, and your um, jugular veins look good and your carotid arteries look good. Good. All right, I'm going to go document that. Can I get you anything right now? Thanks. Okay, take care.